Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the Not Talk. Does the network work? Yeah. Good. I don't know why we bother with the monitoring system if we get that kind of response, so uh, <laughs> you can just ask. Um, so right, um, we're going to just go through a, a few, few little items, some things that came up of interest. Um, obviously we're in a new building, um, we have different hardware that we've had before, we have all new locations and we've, it's been a little bit more work than previous congresses this one, but I think we feel it's gone pretty well. Do you want to talk about the other one? Yep. So yeah, this is basically our uplink pop in some data center. We have uh, every year and at every location the same thing, like we have one dark fab into the building. And from the building it goes to some data center in the, uh, in the city and there we just collect our upstreams and put some multiplexers and route all the traffic to the Congress location. This year we have like two, uh, 22 gigs uplink, where we had two times 10 gig with a full table and two times one gig with partial transit to some internet exchanges. And yeah, so it was just this small setup with like an out of band box, an MX80, one collecting switch for gigabit ports and at the bottom the WDM, which is a multiplexing box where you can put like several colors on one fiber and then split it at the other side. And yeah. Then we had the new building. <laughs> this was the plan we got as the fiber map and we have to figure out what was where connected because it's in the BCC we had like three or four big rooms where everything runs and everything was clearly labeled and here we have like 30 different patch rooms but we only need like eight or nine. Also there was only a Colt and Deutsche Telekom in the building with fibers and we can't get there anything so we have to build a new one. So I talked to the uh, Hamburger Stadtwerke, which are surf tech, and they have a local fiber network here. And we built a dark fiber from the parking lot of the Redison, where the fiber was already, and some in some room here next to the hex center. And so we got at least 30 gigabit here and can use even more next time, <laughs> if you use more bandwidth. <laughs> Yeah, so we also had a lot of more patch rooms because at the BCC we just like carry three big 6509 from Cisco and patch everything down. We have like eight, nine patch rooms here where um, different ports like from two ports to uh, 160 ports in one room. So we have to scale and we chose a virtual chassis solution which we come later to. And also at the knock we had like a big knock this year, we are like 25 people, we are really 15 at the BCC and we had a lot of new guys and it worked pretty well and also we were expecting a lot more users because just yeah we had like 4,000 individual users in the BCC and here we have like 10 with like in wireless and wired networks everything is a bit more and bigger. It's a big building, it's, it's, this place is huge. I'm still lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was also a big problem because we don't know where the fibers are um, running and it was like old multi-mode was like 10 years old so we can't run, we didn't expect that we are, can run a 10 gig backbone here because the fibers are just too old, too shitty and but we measured them everything and we had like only three or four pairs where we actually having trouble of, with the fibers and have to play, replace optics, use conditioning fibers, etc. Yeah, also there was a new hardware platform. Um, we had a complete sponsoring of Juniper at the core. Yeah, they came to us and said, yeah, we'd like to sponsor you, choose your equipment. And then we got to Juniper Red Net and just collected the biggest boxes and <laughs> tons of them. So we are not so familiar with Juniper till now because we had like only a net router like an MX240 or so and used them for BGP uplink and now we have like the Juniper switching platform here which was quite buggy sometimes with specific issues but yeah the virtual chassis thing was I think 
a really good solution and it worked out pretty well because we can like put one 10 gig box in every room and then just stack from one to five or six, uh, seven, eight <laughs> eggs for two below for copper ports and we have a decent backplane which is enough for this congress and yeah it worked better than expected everything. It was quite easy to fit these boxes in the racks because they're all one and two U boxes so instead of having massive chassis and having to try and fit those in racks because every venue we go into already has like existing equipment in racks and we have to work around what's there and um, it's, it's been a lot easier to just go well we can fit this one U box here and this one here and patch into it as required. Yeah for example at the co-location we had like four, three or four switches and uh, to us, those four switches are only, is only one big switch. So they are all like one big chassis and it's a lot easier to manage them because you just have one switch you see there on the picture is like one line card, like in a big chassis. We got also a Q fabric from Juniper, which is like their new cloud layer two router, but we didn't use it because I, yeah, we didn't have a use case for this here. <laughs> because it's just like you have to do management over a copper link and I don't want to place additional fire, uh, media, media converters in it to get the management link to everywhere and it just didn't fit to the building. So we have them here and we tried to play it around but basically we had better things to do when we were <laughs> yeah, not so busy. We were like really fast and we were like finished at day two and day three were mostly spent by nerf gun battles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's basically the core, this was the rest which was left on our table. Uh, yeah, we had eight virtual stacks. At each virtual stack we have like one of those X4500 with a big two IU routers with lots of 10 gig ports. And then we stack like as much X4200 as we need in this place. And this year we also in the BCC we have most time a flat layer two star, which means we have one big core router with every VLANs and IPs on it and every single router there. This year we had uh, mostly every half of the chassis we are doing actual layer 3 routing. And this was a big problem regarding V6 because we just was day one in the morning when someone called and yeah V6 is broken and the droopers are flaky and then we moved everything away from V6 routing from the AX platform and put in second MX we had a spare only four V6 routing here in the building because it was not so much traffic and we could do it on one 10 gig port. Yeah, the yeah, particular problems we had were related to V6 neighbor discovery. Um, there, there's basically limited size in the EX platform for um, IPv6 neighbor table entries, which is kind of like an ARP table equivalent for V6. And um, they couldn't, they could only do, well, the data sheet lists a thousand. Um, which sounds like a lot, but when you have um, link local v6 and all this stuff, it adds up quite quickly. And um, we think our, our problems are related to that. Yeah, for example, in wireless, we had like 3,000 3, or 4,000 neighbor entries, and those boxes are spec for 1,000. <laughs> so it was way too much. So we fixed that on the second day by, as you say, moving the routing. Yeah, we also had um, heat problems as we have rooms here which are quite small. We have one room, it's called Zwergenlager because it has a, <laughs> the floor, uh, the, the roof is like here and there are only two half racks in it and it was like we had 50 degrees or 40 in it, so it mm. was really hot. Yes, yeah, particular problem, particular problem. <laughs> Particular problems for the Dutch members of our team are all very tall and <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and we had and some day two or so an attack on our infrastructure as our DHCP got flooded. Which was some guy who's scanning the internet here and he just missed something in the code. So we had like 600 megabits of broadcast traffic, which was <laughs> a bit too much because we didn't have proper ACLs at this time. So it got hit through the whole network to the DHCP server. And now it's limited because we had like, yeah, it was a new player hardware platform and so we have to figure out how we do all this rate limiting and port protection stuff properly that it works. Yeah, wireless. Oh, I tell you, not about the wireless. <laughs> okay, well, as always, we need to have a wireless network. And usually in the BCC, we deploy 30 or so access points, have a beer, and then the wireless usually works over the past few years with the uh, controller solutions. 
Um, but then they came, yeah, we going, uh, we're going to a new um, location and expect far more users, uh, almost 5,000 visitors this time. And we've seen over the past few years that uh, wireless is going to be, uh, or is used more and more. Um, well, this year we've seen over 3,000 concurrent users, and uh, that has been way less uh, at the BCC and at the camps and um, almost 9,000 unique uh, devices, and it's suitable for uh, all ages. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, uh, hackers do sleep, so you do see... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, uh, oh, that's one too many. Um, we use a technique that's called band select by Cisco. I'm sure that Aruba has something uh, similar. But basically what the a APs are doing, um, they're ignoring association requests on 2.4 gigahertz so that the client is moved to 5 gigahertz. Um, the problem is that it doesn't work for all clients. So that's why you've been seeing multiple SSIDs that you can choose the frequency yourself. Um, but still, most of the associated clients are on 2.4 gigahertz, uh, while they are 802.11n. And as far as I know, if uh, a laptop has a .n chip, most of them uh, are 5 gigahertz capable as well. No? Not the cell phones. The cell phones not, but w which of the f cell phones it's has a .n? <laughs> okay. Well, um, we also made a, made a nice pie chart for uh, the clients by the vendors. Um, still, Apple has the uh, most uh, 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 wireless users. Um, Samsung as, <laughs> as well. <coughs> um, some issue that we had. Uh, well, the Junipers have problems with neighbor discovery. Uh, the controller has that with multicast and ARP. Um, we got messages that uh, the uh, multicast queue was full. Um, we don't know if it had any effect uh, or not. Uh, we were not able to debug it uh, any further. Um, I'll uh, ask the Cisco guys if, uh, if they can comment on this. But other than that, it was uh, working. Um, OK, this is the problem. So about the uh, uh, number of users we've seen. Uh, at the top is the CCC uh, two years ago. I don't have the graph from last year. Uh, but you see that there are about a 1,000 concurrent users. And the bottom one is um, uh, hacking at random in 2009. And well, this year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So, um, well, it uh, most likely will increase next year as well. So, so we always have a colo. Um, the lovely guys in the Knock Help Desk take care of that. Um, and uh, we had quite a large room this year. If, if, I don't know if any of you saw it, um, but we didn't really have the room so officially, I guess. Um, and we had these uh, three tables, and because we had the new Juniper hardware, we were able to offer like more giggy ports because people want more giggy. And we also had some 10 giggy um, connected servers as well. Um, and we did actually manage to uh, f pretty much fill the uplink, I think, on the 20 gig um, from the colo. Uh, we had a, a 10 gig only table. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So, so there's something to think about if you, uh, if you are bringing a colo server, but uh, definitely uh, having lots of one gig copper has, has been popular there. Abuse? Yeah, we had like no real abuse cases. We prepared this year for much. We had an abuse team dedicated, but yeah, more visitors, more visitors does not mean that there are more abuse cases. So we had like two calls and they were like, um, yeah, satisfied in two minutes. I explained to them that we can't catch the user, what we cannot do, and I black hole them on the router, so it was fine everything. We don't have any complaints till now. Maybe uh, there's someone hacked and they only see this in the next year <laughs> when they are working again, but till now it's okay. 
Yeah, what, what we just do is we, we offer them the service of um, we'll just make sure the Congress network never sends them traffic anymore. Um, so this, if this satisfies people, well, that's, that's kind of fine by us. It's nice and easy. <laughs> we don't even charge for it. <laughs> <laughs> So, I don't know if any of you pulled your phones out while you were here, and um, you realised, of course, that we've moved to Hamburg, and you pulled your phone out, and then you looked, and you said, where the hell is Milton Keynes? <laughs> um, that's actually what a lot of British people say as well, like, where the hell is Milton Keynes? Um, <laughs> it's uh, um, an interesting place. Well, actually, um, what I'm talking about is geolocation, and um, this little uh, little... No point pointing at my own laptop screen. Uh, this, this little thing here, where's that? Pinham Park. This was actually where EMF camp was in the summer. And um, a lot of the access points were used in, in uh, at EMF camp. Um, and uh, I think we used around 30 or 40 APs there. And, um, and of course, having moved here, a lot of the geolocation services, which can run on a, a combination of two things. One is the, the MAC address of the AP. Think, oh, the users are clearly in Milton Keynes. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> but this stuff is, is kind of serious business now, um, because obviously there's a combination of IP address and, and, and uh, MAC address of the AP. Um, we have two net blocks here at Congress, um, one of which is, is a permanent block owned by the CCC, and uh, the other one is a temporary block that we get. And one of the problems at the moment is uh, you, you can't get the temporary, with IPv4 running out, uh, they're quite strict on, on when you can get address space. And we don't get it very early, we only got the, the, the big slash 16 that all you guys actually, your devices sit on. Um, we only got that on the 20th, I believe. Yep. Um, and it doesn't make it into the geolocation database. So if any of you use, say, Google services, um, your phone signs into Google and it goes, You've connected from an unknown country. Uh, some kind of fraud security alert thing. Have you locked your account? <laughs> Did you do this? Um, are you really there? Sorry? Yeah, several times a day. Yeah, um, <laughs> this, this sucks. Uh, we're working on obviously getting the right geolocation um, data in, um, and there's some sort of initiatives, but um, it's used for that security thing. and, and I'm, I'm sure we've all looked at like some video URLs. Oh, the, this content owner has decided not to make this available in your country. It's like, well, at the moment, most of you aren't in any country, um, <laughs> as far as they're concerned. So, uh, um, yeah, there's, there's obviously not a lot we can do about this, um, but we are trying to work with, with providers to um, I run various different other conferences and things, networking, and uh, we're, we're, trying to, we're trying to get geolocation working a bit better. IPv6. IPv6 is actually important now. Um, there's actually real IPv6 traffic. This is the shocking thing that we've taken away from this Congress network. Um, I mean, we used to just piss around with it before. Um, we'd enable v6, people would maybe use it, maybe go, oh, that's nice, that's cool, we have v6. There's actually serious traffic now on v6. Since IPv6 launch day, um, yeah, so, those so are not megabit numbers, those yeah. are percentage numbers. Yeah. So we have like, one quarter was V6 traffic here, so it's, it's peak, peaking up to 40%, 40 40 of in, in, yeah. inbound traffic was IPv6. That's that's kind of impressive. <laughs> now, now what, what we don't do is we don't look at your traffic. Um, we're very. Uh, we do not look at your traffic. We don't look at your traffic. We don't look at your traffic. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so, so the thing here is we, we're not, we don't have so many ideas exactly where the traffic's coming from, but there is a lot of V6 content now available out there, and the big ones are, are Google, obviously YouTube, um, and chances are if you were viewing a YouTube video, um, it ca came in over V6, and uh, we, should only, we should hopefully see more of that. Oh. What did you miss? Uh, <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh, yeah, or I did have a V6 graph in there, but that went away somewhere. Anyway, um, this was mainly inbound traffic for, for V6. Now, Congress Network, as you can see on this uplink, we actually do a lot more egress traffic, um, peaking at uh, something like uh, 8 gig. 8.2. 8.2, so I'm told. Um, 
not really enough, actually, is it? I mean, yeah, we, we had put, like 22 gigawatts. So yeah, we had yeah. 30 gig going in the building, 22 gigs out of Hamburg, and you guys just use like eight gig. <laughs> <laughs> Rubbish. I might not bother if we get only don't hit more than 10 at the next Congress. It's <laughs> really unacceptable. Yeah, then we just buy a VDSL or something, and it's enough. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we had this year a V6 only network. We tried it this year to uh, simulate such a bit like what it's going to be outside when you order a DSL or a cable modem connection to your home and you don't get V4 because they don't have any address more than this is one of the transition solutions. It's called Net64. And we got two A10 boxes for this, which are routing the traffic. And uh, we tried to roll it out to you, and we used the one, the f uh, first four edge uh, edge ports on the switches, and we had a wireless SID. So actually, who who tried this or who used it? <laughs> okay. Both of you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so we had some trouble, and um, as the policy, yeah, the policy will change. But if we don't get any IP address more, this would be one of the solutions we have to run the Congress. Mm -hmm. So next year, or if you have time now, you should definitely try it, and it might work. I think if your client supports it, <laughs> yeah, if you, if the client supports it. <laughs> so so you need DHCP v6 and um, yeah. There's, there's some bug, there's some bug bashing to be done there, we think. It yeah. is, uh, um, definitely, there's combinations of clients and, and, and things. We, we collected some good feedback, actually, from some users who were out there using it. So thanks for that. Yeah, oh, so we're done. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. We had actually had a new addition to the NOC this year, um, Nerf guns. Um, <laughs> <laughs> kind of good for stress relief. <laughs> Okay, so thank you so far for the talk. You okay, if you have any more questions, we have two microphones in the room and one signal angel who will be our internet room interface. Um, so we'll just start here. Uh, I wanted to know how much IP space you guys got. Uh, we got like, we have a permanent slash 19 for small events and we used this because we got the slash 16 from RIPE only three days, four days in advance till we start to deploy it. So we had like the slash 19 to run our service and special interest <coughs> groups in. And for the normal access net we used the slash 16. And for v6 we had a slash 84, which 48. 48. <laughs> would fit small. Uh, would fit. And um, yeah, so we mapped basically the VLAN ID in it, and every VLAN has a slash. But basi basically, there's a, a problem with the, the ripe, ripe region, the ripe NCC who assign IP addresses in Europe. There's a, a what I call a problem with the policy, um, which will hopefully get changed next year, where we're only actually allowed to get temporary number resources seven days before the event. And in a lot of cases, we've already, like, the network's up and running at that point. Um, so we, we kind of have to bootstrap this with smaller bits of address space in order to then we get the big block and we can announce that and, and, and then provide service. Okay, do we have a question from IRC? I don't know. Okay, until the microphone's working, you may... Hey, awesome Hi. job. <laughs> Thanks. Um, you guys seem to have a lot of fun playing with cutting edge networking hardware. I was wondering, um, have you considered uh, setting up a test bed for software defined networking or uh, using it actually? Mm, we are more like, um, we use what's already working and... Because the Juniverse support, <laughs> yeah. support, uh, supports uh, SD, SDN, but... Um, no, like I've, I've seen it at the Congress, at the, Congress the Supercomputing Congress, where every switch vendor was participating and it was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's like we don't have so much time to deploy all the stuff, yeah. so if I would say, it, yeah, we could run MPLS over the whole network, but it was like too much work. We don't, I don't know if everyone in the NOC uh, knows how to run MPLS, and so we are just doing the basic stuff and where we know that it works. 
and we are not that like trying new things anymore. Like we use the stable ones because actually you have to provide a service now and not as yeah. Sure. It's it's good when the internet works. It's like the internet has to work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Maybe now the internet microphone works. Yep, I hope it does. Yeah. Um, one question was how many broken equipment was there? Um, we have like three broken access switches, I think, or four, but Leon? No cables and fibers? Yeah. Okay. Not really. Some, yeah, we have like one or two optics that died, mm. and yeah, I expected more, but everything worked too well. <laughs> the, the, the HPs normally keep on working unless they get too much Marta poured in them. Um, <laughs> or worse, someone just takes it home with them, then the switch is no use. But, uh, <laughs> and some people were asking what, uh, which software did you use for N864? Uh, N864? Uh, Falk released basically everything on the A10 box, I think. Uh, microphone. Uh, the NAT64 stuff run, uh, run on the A10 boxes, and we had some trouble with DNS64, so we use a TOTD for that on Linux. Okay. Uh, so for the wireless, uh, did you actually have any measurements uh, inside the various rooms about uh, how much signal there is in the air? Yeah, we. Yeah, I don't have a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, the Cisco APs, they um, uh, take a lot of measurements, and I do have reports in, uh, per AP and everything. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, there were basically a, a little thing at the first day, I think, where we went home for a short time. Mm -hmm. We ran a small test how the yeah. big, uh, who was the biggest user in the wireless, and we found someone who was leeching with 60 Mbit for an hour in the middle of Hall 1. So, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Hi, um, I have a question. Uh, have you any pictures about the rooms you're working in, uh, where you uh, all the stuff? Can't come a few. It's mostly chaos, but uh, <laughs> yeah, do you have yeah. Some, we, of the they were, some of them are too embarrassing them? to put in the uh, <laughs> uh, in the thing. But uh, yeah, I did, I did get some. Uh, oh yeah, here's, here's some. <laughs> <laughs> These are kind of arty, aren't they? Really. Yes, uh, thanks, Alex. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's make this bigger. Yeah, cables. <laughs> cables. Yeah, so that are some installations where we only have a few patches and a rack up the wall, and yeah, then we have we needed a place to put the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> See what I was saying about the one you switches being kind of useful. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh yeah. So yeah, this, this was our main core and the vendor trap here. <laughs> Yeah, at the bottom it's uh, the X45 with a 10 gig core. Then we have like three copper switches for the hex center and the whole area. Then there's another one which is routing only the wireless traffic, then the wireless controller, and at the top is the Namix 80 for the V6 stuff. It grew over time. Yeah. Wouldn't that be into the wiki? Yeah, the slides are online after this, we can upload some pictures with them. It's usually a bit too embarrassing to. <laughs> it's like we are all professional network engineers as well, and we like we build these wonderful creations of like beauty and stuff, and then we come to Congress. Yeah, at least like, we use some. <laughs> some Velcro, so it's yeah, we did use it's Velcro. It's not I mean, so like messy for the time, and that it's just. Stacked on top everything. Now it he's getting defensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, not yeah. really. <laughs> yeah, it's it's okay. And more colo pictures. <laughs> A 
I didn't want to show that photo. The Mac uh, is broken. <laughs> yeah, this was the Fem Data Center of the streaming guys. It was in a um, in a stairway. Stairway. Yeah, probably. Trepper. Trepper. Yeah. Stairway. 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 And they just put a rack in there, and we ran 10 gig to them, and so they put their stuff also there. <laughs> Okay, um, so there were some access points in hole one that were hanging from the ceiling. Now, my question is, and I really hope if, that's, if the answer is interesting that you have pictures from it, how did you hang them there? Did you climb somewhere on the ceiling? Did you have ladders that uh, got there or something? Skyhooks. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if uh, this is working, but uh, yeah, it is. Um, our, uh, we can thank our Austrian climber for that. <laughs> <laughs> I really think you should have abseiled in at this point, Wolfie. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it's much less glamorous. There's, uh, uh, there's a, a level above the ceiling where you can just walk on metal one ways and anchor access points to it, and basically, Kelly just lower them on steel cables, and that's everything. Yeah, they're not actually hanging from just from the Cat5 cables. Our crimp is not. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, do you have some measurement about the maximum internal traffic? That data exists. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yes. We can make an aggregate of all 10 gig ports, but uh, no, it's a bit difficult to don't measure the traffic twice or so. Yes, it's. Uh, because we have the external traffic, so how do you subtract it? It's sort of, I mean, the, the core is like yeah, we multiple could, links. but uh, we don't really like to look so deep in the stuff. Like, S flow is for my thing a bit too deep already because you see like destination IP address. So we are throwing the stuff away at the first point, which we don't need. And yeah. <laughs> I, I included it last year, so we didn't talk about it again this year, but we, we, we literally store as little data as possible. Um, we um, throw it away where we can, we, don't, we keep it in RAM rather than on disk, we encrypt things. You're also a privacy officer. He's mm -hmm. auditing our systems at day one and checking that we don't accident accidentally have some locks somewhere with leases in it or MAC addresses, so we don't store any data which is not really needed to run the network. As is correct. Do we have still questions from IRC? Well, there are general thank yous out to the fan guys and to the knock. And um, one interesting question were there any attacks against the CCH com network like last year in Berlin? So, was a network attack to them? I don't know of one, so... <laughs> yeah, I think it was mentioned last year there was a network attack from outside to the Congress. Ah, network. you mean this year? Uh, this year we don't have had one. So last year we had a DOS from some Amazon VPS cloud thingy to our servers. But DNS servers, yeah. Yeah, but this year we have... No, not really something from the outside. And how many traffic did the stream alone cause, if there's data on that? Uh, what? How many traffic did the streams cause? Uh, actually, like uh, 5 to 10 Mbit. We only relay them one time to the outside. And at the outside, the FEM has their own servers, and they relay them through several universities and data centers. So we actually have to transport the stream only one time from the inside to the outside. So I don't really know. But we had like a dashboard, and there you saw the stream users. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, by the way, we turned off the network, you know, like. <laughs> Oh, very good. There we go. Uh, full screen, full screen. What? You need to refresh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 
Ja. <laughs> like I said, it's turned <laughs> off. I mean, it's your computer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there are somewhere some streams. Yeah, here and we had a uh, really big peak with like six thousand uh, streaming viewers at the Front News Show. <laughs> and so you can uh, basically click on dashboard.congress.cccd. We collect there everything. What we get like POC users, uh, angel shifts this year. Last year we had radiation counts. So if you have anything what is graphable data, just uh, mention it to us and we try to integrate it. Um, some of the access points hanging from the ceiling had some, uh, I don't know, some more antennas. They don't look like they come from the shelf like this. Uh, did you uh, modify them or what this is? No, they actually come from the shel sh shelves like that. Uh, we have the ones that are hanging here uh, without external antenna possibility and the ones in cell one and at some I think at some other places we have the ones with ex external antennas. Yeah, and looked so because. <laughs> yeah, and we don't have. <laughs> no, uh, we really have antennas in cell one on the access point. Yeah, but um, these cable binders look like antennas. Ah. Oh. No, we have like they they look like like spiders hanging from yeah. the ceiling, <laughs> but it's only with uh, black antennas because we don't have Cisco branded factory shiny it's just antennas. Just an antenna. For it just don't make any sense, so we put our own ones on it. Okay, do we have questions from IRC? So, because if not, that's it. Um, there was a question, who runs the network? Are they all volunteers or anything else? Oh, no. Stand up, not people. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Yeah, we, we all just work in that one. <laughs> yeah, we have people from all over, actually, uh, from many different countries. And um, like, not everyone is a professional network engineer. We have some people who are students and other, other things. So yeah, we have a, a, a reasonable selection of people, I guess. <laughs> OK, uh, no more questions. So thank you again. Thanks. Thank you. you are awesome.